this meeting to order. Stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, additions, deletions, and corrections to the agenda. I move that we uh, move the uh, special meeting regarding SAB up to uh, the next next item on the agenda. Um, we have members that just can't be here for the whole time. Eric, I know, has to leave in 25 minutes. So I'll support okay. that. Okay. Um, do we have a second? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Let's move into the uh, special meeting um, regarding SAB. Uh, the floor is open for questions from the board members. Concerns, comments? <coughs> Anybody? Do we have your number of Are we online? Um, SAB is online also. Can everybody hear me from uh, the virtual? You know, you can always see that. Okay. Yes, you can. Uh, any board members have any questions for uh, the SAB representatives? Um, Lacey, I just have one more question that I mean, for you. And I read the white paper, I'm just making sure that I read Can it. everybody hear Eric online? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Um, just making sure I read it correctly. She, what's her name again? Sorry. Uh, Dr. Bob Patrick. She didn't see any environmental concerns the way I was reading this, correct? Is that how you, everybody else did? how I read Okay, so I, I just wanted to make sure I, there was a lot of stuff in there. I got to the end, I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, that was pretty easy, but I wouldn't just went to the end, so. And she did, uh, <laughs> and she did do worst case scenario in there? Yeah. Um, where if every existing munition stored in these bunkers exploded all at the same time. That's what she used to try to figure there wouldn't be any surface issues, long-term issues that she saw. Okay. All right, that was my only question. Board members, concerns, comments, questions? I've got a comment, and then ultimately I'll hear from the rest of the board, I'm sure. But we all know why we're here as a special meeting, and that's to review the AKT Peerless Environmental Stewardship Summary. And ultimately, it's because the board had voted all the way back in July that we were going to provisionally allow the sale to go forward pending our review and then acceptance of that environmental review. I think it's important to look at that in terms of, um, again, what I said at our last meeting. And I apologize for my range of uh, discussions at some point. We had 10 pages of meeting minutes from last week, but I think this is that important. The point was, as the people who have a say in whether or not property within our community can be used, we wanted to make sure from those who are proposing the SAB that the proposed uses are going to have any potential danger to the community. And so the way we find out the answer to that question is not because the AKT Peerless Environmental Stewardship Summary convinces us of that fact that there's no risk. And if it does, we probably need to vote one way. And if the review that's provided doesn't give us that So I find it helpful, of course, I know Raven Township has a secondary vested interest in this, and you're going to need to make your own determination. And it's helpful to have the white paper and the responses from, um, from Dr. Packer. But the problem that I've seen, felt, and I think the board expressed right from the beginning of this project is that we've not been getting the information from the party who's supposed to be giving us the information. Saab has been the one that's going to provide us the information and convince us. And that makes sense because they're the ones that are proposing to purchase property. And again, as I um, said last time, but I think it bears repetition, we didn't choose the words that were made or that were used in the environmental stewardship summary. So that information was totally by Saab. They, they used it through however they decided to issue it. And there's a lot of points in there that I think have given me concern. I can only speak for myself, and I respect
respect every other board member, I recognize, and you stated it, I think, well last time, we see that the board walks a fine line. We're trying to encourage business growth. We know that this is going to be a multi, scores of millions of dollars of investments in our local community that provide jobs for our kids. There's obvious positives. So we walk a fine line between knowing that and then also having to account for unknowns. So I think it's good, again, that Dr. Packer offers some expertise and some, um, some background. But we know from the Environmental Stewardship Summary, I know from reading it, that Saab's view is they understand the profound impact that their operations have on natural resources. Because of that, they make a specific point that they're not going to be transporting any of these explosives through the drain. The report notes that the water table is somewhere 15 to 25 to 45 feet below ground. The site is less than a half a mile from the lake, Lake Schellenbarger, that flows directly into the south. We know that their language was that if there's, if there's issues, this is the quote again, I brought it up last time, through well-structured environmental work practices and continuous improvements, the environmental impacts from plants, products, and services shall be minimized as far as technically possible and economically reasonable. That is fancy language, but it says if there's a problem, which Dr. Packer is trying to suggest to the board, I think that there's not going to be a problem. But if there's a problem, they'll fix it so long as they determine it to be economically reasonable. And we're not dealing with a furniture company. We're not dealing with, what we're dealing with is explosives. We're dealing with military hardware. And I find it hard, I am not convinced I recognize I might not, I might be the only one who's not convinced, but I'm not convinced that there's no danger to the surrounding area. From the proximity to our fresh water, I'm on the river every single day, so maybe I'm biased um, because I am a user of the river, I live on the river. Um, seeing that, and being seeing the amended environmental stewardship summary provided by Saab that says that, well, they don't amend that, I brought that up as a concern, my concern at least, I don't speak for the whole board, I get that. But that was what was brought up last time. And I recognize the difficulty Saab's in, and their point was, I think, well taken. How can they provide us information if we don't know what it is? But when Dr. Packer says, you know, there's going to be 7,000 pounds of uh, Royal Dutch explosive in the secondary, and uh, a pound of explosive in the primary for the ground-launched small diameter bombs, I just find it hard to imagine how an explosion of that in property that close to a water source wouldn't, in high permeable soils, have a chance of entering our waterway. And I know that what Dr. Packer says is that it's a low risk. But it's not convincing to me um, as a board member. And it's not convincing to me, especially because that type of information that's provided is provided from somebody who's not SOB. And I'm not doubting Dr. Packer's qualifications. I think she's put together what looks like a lot more information um, than certainly I would have come up with. But it just doesn't it doesn't feel convincing to me. And the problem is that the context of all of that is how we got it and when we got it. And the fact that we didn't start with information in this case and it's felt like we've had to call to EPA. And my concern with that as it relates to environment and environmental concerns is when we need to get for more information in the future, whether we can get it. Because so far, we have not been provided information until the last minute before these hearings, um, and then we've got to make a rush decision on, on what's happening. And we know this isn't about whether or not I agree with the DNR's process, I don't. This isn't about whether or not I think the MEDC tried to force this down our throat, I think they did. This is about whether or not we accept the environmental stewardship summary and agree that, um, agree that there's no risk to our environment. And I just say, I just say for me, and, and I respect whatever else anybody else wants to say on the point as well, for me, it's, I'm not convinced. And that is what needed to happen is we, that we as a board um, would review and then accept the environmental report. And the question that might be asked fairly is what else can we present? And the answer that I would provide is I don't know, but it's not there. I'm skeptical, I'm concerned, um, and that's my view. Uh, I, I want to hear the other board members' view. Ultimately, the vote is either going to be there's going to need to be a motion with multiple kind of 
conflicted motions to approve or to not approve. Um, and I'm happy to hear everyone else's opinions on it. Every board member is saying, we have seven of us here, we have 11 total, so we've got four. We can take a vote on that. But I, I've got concerns that haven't been resolved um, by the stewardship summary. And, and really, even though I, again, have no reason to doubt the expertise of Dr. Packer, it, it's not something that's alleviated the concerns that I have um, as a board member from the way this project is coming together to where it is now. I guess I have a lot of the same concerns, but I guess one of my questions would be is of any company that um, the Grand Township allows to come in and that it goes through the MOU and the CCEDP, <coughs> is there ever going to be a time that we would say there is zero? possibility of a negative impact in a worst case scenario. Um, whether it be Georgia Pacific, well, not them now, but uh, Aralco, um, Warehouser, I don't know if it was ever said worst case scenario, something blows up, what type of an impact would there be on the groundwater? Um, close to the same distance that there is, it is here. I'm just wondering if we could ever get a, any company to say there's absolute zero response. Yeah, that's a fair, it's a fair question and that's what I'm sure Saab would, would say to my concerns as well. And maybe the entire board shares that too, is you can't ever say there's zero risk because there's always some risk. I just knew, my personal view is that along with the proposal, and if the proposal is more than, you know, part of the board of manufacturer and it's um, assembly of ground launch, small diameter bombs, I think the, I think the burden changes. The, the standard is the same. The board has to be convinced that there's, there's more benefit than risk. Um, but I think the concern when it grows, um, the level of um, certainty probably has to grow too. I mean, that's, that's my personal feeling. That's not something that's written in. The CCEB, as I understand it, just has to decide that we're comfortable with letting it move forward because the positives outweigh the negatives. I'm just saying, for me, um, you're right, maybe it's a, an unreachable standard. And that's not what I want to uh, suggest for this project or any in the future. All I'm suggesting is that for this one, I've, I've, got, I've got concerns. But you make a good point. I don't think I don't think Aruco can, and I don't think Saab can say there's absolutely zero risk. And neither could a Kmart, you know, if we approve a Kmart coming in. That's impossible. So I agree. Okay. Board member? Um, at this point I'd like a motion to terminate the possible sale of the property to Saab due to environmental risks. Second. Second, any further discussion? Um, I guess I would just ask, what is the concern? Envir environmental risk, um, to me, if you're making a motion that you maybe know something, some risk that would be there, which I don't know, and I certainly would be willing to understand, but what is the risk that is my risk is contamination of our river and our watershed. Um, as uh, Your Honor said, the fourth and a half mile of that water supply, um, that explosion would pick up anything on that property. 
understand the number of professional opinion on the environmental effects to disagree with necessarily that this is coming from. I mean, we, like, we're, none of us are experts in these things. We have the opinions of those that are. There is risk. There's limited risk, but there is risk. Okay, but as we said before, there's going to be nothing that's not going to have risk. So I, I guess, what, are you disagreeing with something that's in their reports that? No, I agree with the reports. There is limited risk. And right now, we're dealing with water supply for our community because of an unknown risk from something that's known to create a PRA. And personally, I believe there's limited risk that any of that goes to the water table that I'm not going to sign off on. Was Dr. Packard's um, white paper, is that independent review? Or, I mean, how, how do we acquire that? I'm sorry, Paul. How do we acquire Dr. Packard's report? One more time, I didn't. He was asking us, is it in, you asked whether it was an independent right. review, who did it come from? Right. How did we get Dr. Packard involved? Dr. Packard has been involved since the very beginning. She even participated along with, uh, you know, AECOM when they were doing their environmental study to, uh, you know, have her input. She has been a professional consultant since the very beginning. Who paid her? Nobody. She did it for free. She offered her services and I accepted them because she is, uh, has really? over four years experience. You accepted them on her on real consumption behalf? Yes. So in Dr. Packard, when this first came to light that Sam was looking here, she was in my office uh, talking about PFAS because that's where she was working was PFAS. And she's had major concerns in the beginning, like make sure you do a thorough background on she went to Lacey and said she would do her work for free. So. I guess I, I, I certainly respect Colin's position and, and I, I understand it. I don't, don't want in any way kind of just do it, but I, I tend to lean more towards Tom's comments on I don't think I don't think anything is without risk. Um, and if she's independent, I put more weight on what she had said versus I, I feel more concerned coming out of Stoops trucking repair garage because I don't know, I haven't seen the site plan, but I know there's always floors in the drain, or drains in the floor, so when they're working on trucks, all the oil, gas, the things that leak, they're going into the ground. And that is as well going into the system. So I have more concerns with a trucking company doing repairs and leaking that out of the ground than I do from what I've read in these papers. Okay. Do we have experts in developing issues that are needed to ask comments on? Uh, we have one military, two military gentlemen in the audience. I don't know if I, I didn't hear you said Dan. Do you guys have any expertise? Bottom line, you shoot it, right? That, that, that's it, you shoot it, it hits. This pollution that Dr. Packard had just put in, that she put in the report, what she stated is what happened with this, right? So if you can imagine that catastrophic event, as Colin had asked about, Colin had asked about, right? What happens, it implodes on itself, from what I read for, from her, the, for lack of better words, the fireworks fly up in the air, then they float back down on the ground, they hit the ground, and at that point, they're so minuscule, according to her report, that they're gone to nothing flat. Now, there is no drains in an animal bunker, right? An animal bunker is made to take the explosion of the stuff, the content that's in there. And it's made to only explode one animal bunker, not all the animal bunkers. So there's, they're made to implode in one of them. I, I'm not an expert on, on what's gonna happen. Again, I, I'm, I read what Bonnie wrote, right? So I'm, I'm I'm basing my stuff on what she had said. I agree with Colin. It's close to the it's close to the river, but you know we're all we're all Americans. We celebrate the Fourth of July. Look at the amount of four and five inch fireworks we shoot off next to the headwaters of the Asalo every Fourth of July, and, and look at the stuff in the fireworks that we're shooting. Right, kind of the same stuff. So if we're gonna look at one thing, we should look at many things. Right. 
And, and, and I, I don't want to get rid of the fireworks. I don't want to get rid of the fireworks. But, you know, I, I agree 100% with what Tom said. For, there's nothing safe in the world. You know, everything we do has mitigations that go along with it to make it low, high, medium, or whatever we do. Charlie's big propane truck going down North Down River it gets hit and has a massive explosion, right? What the hell do we do? I, I don't know. It's, it's, does, you know, it's up to this board to decide, and it's really up to you guys to decide. Do the risk outweigh the, you know, do the positive outweigh the risk, risk or is there any risk to, to look at? I, I agree with Tom, it's close to the water, but man, I, I think whoever brought up GP on Four Mile Road, I'd be more worried about that than I would be, than I would be this, right? I mean, that is train loads of freaking chemicals going down the road. Again, there's mitigations in the plant, but who knows between them and the roof, right? There's so many things to look at. It's, it's your guys' decision to make, but I, I, I'm gonna say that I believe Bonnie Packard is probably more experienced in this than anybody I know, right? From what I've read, so don't don't take anything from me. I, I, I don't know, I can't say, other than read her report and base your, base your decision on that. Did he answer your question, Dan? I don't even know what, I mean, I love Joe, but I don't even know what he just said. Um, I'm not, I'm not, I'm a qualified ammunition officer. All I'll say is we can even look at the contamination values in the groundwater, in the soil, at every Department of Defense ammunition depot and private ammunition depots, when we look at those, when we look at the contamination, whether it be a civilian Remington factory, Winchester, whatever factory, those are contaminated. And, and I understand the argument is gonna be, well, that happened in the 50s and 60s and 70s before we really cared. But when we look at the ammunition depots that the Army or the Marine Corps or the Air Force own or the Navy, Every one of those facilities is a Superfund site. Every one of them. And if it's not a Superfund site, it just doesn't, hasn't made the list yet. Um, when we look at all the proving grounds that the Army owns, and I'll just talk Army because that's where my, my forte is. I lived at Aberdeen for eight months. Can't drink the water. The deer are all albinos. They all have racks. They're, the bucks have racks that are all in this again. It's from the testing that was done there. Now, I'm not advocating that Saab is gonna do that kind of testing, yet I believe the potential exists that Saab, at one time, is gonna change your business model. They're gonna get new contracts. There's gonna be some things that are gonna happen down the road. And if anybody in this room thinks Little Old Grayling Township is gonna make them do a special use permit, when we gotta go up against multi-billion dollar corporations that are international, um, that have a lot of clout, a lot of lobbyists, um, are part of conglomerations that employ lobbyists, um, I think we got another thing coming. And again, that's all about the ammunition. That's all I'll say. I'll hold my other comments to public comment time. Thank you. So Dan, I'll, I'll go back to what Mike just said, right? I, I, agree, with, I agree with Mike that Army Depot is some, some different things, right? But we're not looking at Army Depot. So we're not looking at training places. We are looking at this, this, this case in front of us and the, the two munitions that they're assembling here, right? And the, and the effects from those munitions that they are assembling, what they were, what they bring in the 2000s, not the 1950s or 60s or 70s, when we didn't give a crap about what happened to the environment. We are definitely holding things to a higher standard by far. So if you're gonna look at those two munitions, look at those and look at those only. Don't base your reports on things that happened in the past. We are looking at this and we're looking at the future. And I do agree with Mike also that 20 years from now, if they're not making rockets here, maybe they do change their forte and do something else. Again, we have to look at what's at hand. We cannot for, try to foresee what's coming or what's not coming with this company, right? This is this is your guys' thing to look at. Look at the munitions, look at Bonnie Packard. Bonnie Packard has more experience than anybody that I know. She really does. Look at her report, 
what the hair reference is, look at that last page and everything she referenced. I don't know if Mike's seen it, I don't know if Fred's seen it, but you know, maybe they did, maybe they didn't, but that was a pretty well written report. Well, and of, and of course, since we're doing counterpoint, so I'll take a turn. Did you? This is going to be the last one. Uh, did you have a question for me specifically? I'm happy to answer any of the questions you might have. That's from the board. That's that's fine. That's, uh, that's fine. Dr. Patrick has joined the uh, meeting. Does uh, anybody from the board have uh, specific questions for uh, Bobby regarding the uh, um, AECOM peerless and or the uh, her white paper? Anybody from the board? I don't have any for Bonnie at this time, but I would like to ask, um, based on that study, that's based on what they said they're going to use in manufacturing currently. Is there anything in your description that says that if they change chemicals, they change things, they have to do another environmental study? Can they change the business model six months from now and do something totally different? Or is it not felt starting over with the planning commission is now over? Saying you think Sam's going to be up front and open, telling you they're going to change the composition of the uh, ammunition charges I am not. before they do it. I am not. I am saying that in order to uh, change from what the uh, site plan and the planning commission and Highland Township approved, you have to start the process all over from the beginning like it never existed. If they're going to totally change, change, if Correct. they're totally going to change what they're doing yeah. from being a manufacturing plant or an assembly plant to a manufacturing plant, for example. Yes. But not the particular yes. items that would be used or changed in the manufacturing. That would be up to the planning commission to ask what the, what they're going to do there to start this process. Mm -hmm. So the rest of the draft is not. Yeah. So if we're going to change the blue and the chemicals they use, they have to come back to you guys and ask that. They do not. No, nope, they're not changing their process. They're not changing going from doing uh, what they were originally doing to build that board that they were going to switch and build a. Uh, whole different product line situation that were out there and, and change what they uh, originally came for then yeah so then if stop change their chemical composition to an explosive they would come back to you with it as long as they're building the same munitions as uh yeah they would not have to run across so what's their permitting process through eagle and i'm sure there has to be something as far as munitions go I can't comment to or federal regulations and or you know compliance that they have to do that separate permitting agency. So there is something like that, I'm sure. Yeah. So well, there's, there's lots of those, days. and that's what Dr. Packer spoke to. I mean, yeah. she references AKP peerless references, you know, but there's all these other things in place in terms of mitigation. Uh, the, the point, the, the only thing I will say to that is, yes, those are in place, but those things, many things have been in place in terms of mitigation that haven't stopped problems from happening. And my concern, again, is that, to Don's point, you're never going to remove all concerns. I get it. I just have concerns. I do. Um, if those aren't uh, deemed to be the same concerns for everyone else, I'm not going to tell everyone else how to, how to view it. But I'm not convinced that all the mitigation things that have been in place up to this point protecting our environment that's why we're dealing with all sorts of new water issues in Grayling Township and I know it's not apples to apples I'm not trying to compare peat moss Dr. Pack did a good job of kind of describing some of the differences so the point is there are mitigation things in place and there's still tragedies that affect our environment I've got concerns and that's all that's all I can I'll just say it's not a question it's a statement
things in here, some head shaking, yes. Anybody see out there is a verify that it's yes. Look at that, Dina. Hi, Dina. Hey. All right, so just to update, so we've got eight total of 11. Try a shorthand. I can try a shorthand it this way. Uh, Anita was just having a discussion in general. Uh, all the board members have waited so far. I expressed concerns that I have um, that the language in the environmental stewardship summary didn't leave me uh, a great deal of. It left me with concerns about this project. I expressed that as a concern, um, and I recognize that the report by Dr. Packard does a lot to mitigate those concerns. Um, but I am left with concerns about what's going to happen in the way that we've gotten information from stock and whether or not that affects how much we can put stock in what they're saying. Now, I've expressed those concerns. A lot of other board members have expressed that. Uh, Tours expressed that. He notices, he notes those things, but there's no way that you can mitigate all this. And I think there's generally a competing discussion between all board members so far as some I've expressed some concerns. Um, Dan has expressed some concerns, um, and there's been a lot of other people um, that have expressed not as many concerns or no concerns because of Dr. Packard's report. Uh, Eric and Paul, I think, generally expressed they had concerns, but also thought that the report did a lot of job, a uh, good job of mitigating it. Is that general? Did I capture those generally so far as just give a summary to the data? We do have a motion on the floor to terminate the sale of the stock to the environmental risks. I right. made a motion. So we'll have a discussion about that, and we also talked about the fact that we may have competing motions. Um, but the point of this meeting was to make these motions and then to have them resolved. We've got eight board members present of the 11 total, so we have four.
issues and some of that, I agree with you, there is some sentiment that needs to be healed. I don't think it's been a smooth process through everyone. I don't think the blame is only on staff. Like that. I do think there has been, which as we've talked about in the last few meetings, it's been on multiple parties. So I don't think that, I'm not uncomfortable with the communication point of it. <clears throat> or concerns that have been raised or asked um, in the environmental permit matrix outlining the environmental stewardship summary report, scope of services, um, content analysis, project management, asking Bonnie, Dr. Bonnie Packers with uh, um, years of experience, especially in the munitions industry, um, and leaning on her um, throughout this process. Uh, his son has been a willing partner to answer every single question and concern. Um, for some reason, I have been put as the face of this um, process with Saad. And I want it to be known to everybody on this board that I fight for Grayling Township and nobody else. I put my personal, personal opinions aside and I try to do what I think is best for Grayling Township. There's only been two partners throughout this whole process that have not lied or been deceitful in any kind of way throughout this whole process since the very beginning. And that is Saab and the members of our community. There's been outside groups that have lied to make it fit their narrative in multiple other agencies that have done the same to fit their narrative. The only ones who have not lied to me throughout this whole process has been Saab and the members of the board that I deal with. So, that being said, that's my opinion. Um, take it for what it's worth. I think everybody knows how I feel when it comes to the environmental concerns. Um, we've all spoke, we've allowed members of the audience to speak. Um, I'm asking the board for a yes or no. Would you like, uh, um, would it be okay or would you, you guys be interested in hearing from the representatives from South there? I think we need to vote the wrong way. I don't okay. think I request a roll call vote. I think we need to vote. And I think right, that everybody's, that's my, only my suggestion. I'm not trying to yep. make that a, a requirement. But I think that Saab has given us the information, and, and if the board as a whole is satisfied with it, they are. If they're not, they're not. Um, and there, in my mind, isn't any, there's no part of the CCDP that says that we can't revisit anything. So okay. I think that's a positive thing. Well, Obviously, if we vote to approve, we're not going to be able to do anything. We all know that. If we vote to approve the sale, there's other things that have to happen in our hands. But if we deny, there's nothing to say that we couldn't revisit it. I'm not suggesting that's where I think the board is going with it. But I'm just saying, I think the vote needs to be taken, and then um, everybody needs to you know, let their voice through. That's uh, okay. So that's the, right. the question is really, though, um, it sounds like, and nobody specifically brought it up, so I'll, I'll try to phrase it in this way. Is there one motion that we're going to vote on, or are there competing motions? Right now, we have one motion on the floor to vote on, and that's uh, Dan's motion. Okay. In uh, your, your second. So, to deny the sale. To deny the sale. <clears throat> so, a vote of yes would be to deny the sale. A vote of no would be not to deny the sale. Well, just to make it clear. 
Motion is to deny. So if you vote aye in favor, you're voting to deny the sale. If you vote no against, you're voting to uh, deny Dan's motion in my second. Um, so a no would be that you want to, you're ultimately going to bring a motion to probably have it approved. Right? Six no's, two in favor of denying the sale. So the motion to deny the sale does pass. Okay. All right, further discussion. Concerns are that um, I don't feel like we got information, and I think the process has been, frankly, a work in progress. The CCEDP program in general and the MR memorandum of understanding. We have seen that how it's played out. This started with us in July when everything was attempted in my mind to be rushed through, with us not even knowing who the company was, not knowing what they were going to manufacture. Very clearly, I remember expressing concerns, and Dan had them as well, about who they are and why it's being hidden from us. It gave me angst and concern all the way from the beginning because of that, even though I know that we had um, a former union manager um, that Eric worked with, was here on behalf of me at NBC. He explained why there's that monitor, but I remember there being concerns, and it felt like to me we were being um, not given the full picture. There was side meeting upon side meeting, there were discussions had that I wasn't a part of, and there was just things that were being provided to some and not to all, and it did never feel like I was getting it, and I didn't ever feel like I got it until the day before a hearing or our meetings. And that's why ultimately we crafted what I thought was really careful language to say that we were approving contingent upon our receiving review and acceptance of this environmental review. I read the environmental review and the same things that I noted last time when I read the amended one, um, really didn't get addressed. And that was SAB, in my estimation, didn't provide that lack of um, concern. They amplified it with the language they chose that they were going to react to problems as far as technically possible and economically reasonable. That's problematic language that they chose, in fact, in their amended environmental stewardship summary. And that, re that summary was clear about how close the project is to the Asabo and to the Shelf Parker Creek, which we know leads into the Asabo. And um, the way that things go, I mentioned that I had no reason to doubt the expertise of Dr. Macker, but it didn't really, that's coming from her, that's not coming from Saab. And I know that she's here on behalf of Graham Township, and that's what some of the other board members pointed out, that she's the independent expert, and we should rely on her. And I don't mean to discount her, but I don't feel that it came from Saab. And my concern is that it's not ever coming from who we've been trying to get it from. I remember asking Saab about things at our meeting in um, September or November, I can't remember which one it was, the construction, Kirkle Mannix, I came with the answer, and I said, look, respectfully, I'm not trying to get the information from the construction manager, and I recognize you're part of the same team, but the issue for me has been always how we get the information. Then we dealt with the rigmarole with DNR, them trying to tell us what we said and what we did, and it appears that they may have relaxed on that. The process itself has been frustrating to me. The ultimate uh, view that I had is when Saab has to convince us, I had concerns, Say what I thought is the whole process has been a mess, and 
I think it's going to make us, it should make us as a board, try to really um, see these potential problems moving forward with all approvals and make sure we're not getting any type of uh, perhaps contingent approval because it makes it seem like. Now, they gave us the opportunity, it looks like, to be an hour's going to hold off on a sale until we do get to make this, uh, have this involvement that I knew that we should have from the beginning. So I'll, I'll admit, a lot of my angst and my concern, my disgust, was with the way I felt that our equal partners, ENR, was treating the board um, as just an afterthought. That has nothing to do with, and I'm trying to set it aside, emotion has nothing to do with stop, um, because that was just how the ENR interpreted it. But all of those things together led me to have still concerns. And even though I know who said it, it's right, because you can't give, you can't set aside all of this. Um, and one of the things is this isn't a you know, furniture company. This is a company that makes bonds. choose to me is them saying to us clearly what they're going to do. A, they don't think there is any risk. B, if there is risk, we'll fix it as far as technically possible and economically reasonable. We know there's risks with bonds. That's why we're not bringing in two grand. Again, I'm not, I don't, mean, I don't want to be repetitive. The rest of the board has heard me, heard me speak and say these things. I'm kind of trying to repeat them because I came in late because you had some conflicts, but um, but the whole, the whole board has voiced their view on it. Um, I hope I got it captured in the minutes. I try to, um, on each individual's um, kind of point of view. But that's why I had concerns. So where would we stand then as a board would be my question. I mean, would you want Bob to take another um, like a stab at it to provide those details, or more detail than you do with all well, I mean, I think it's, I, I hear what I think everyone else is saying on the board. Um, I hear what you said, Lacey, and I recognize your viewpoint of it. But it sounds to me like in, the motion has already answered the question. There was a motion to deny the sale. It failed. There hasn't yet been anyone make a motion or second bid or have discussion on the obverse of that, which is to accept the proposal and allow the sale to move forward. But because six of eight board members here today didn't want to deny the sale, that leads me to believe that you want to approve the sale, and if so, then we should have a, a motion on it. It should be um, you know, determined, and we should have the board make its collective voice. Right, I mean, that's the purpose of the hearing, uh, the meeting today, is to either uh, approve or not approve. So we know we have not approved, we just have that motion. <coughs> so. Thanks for uh, updating that for me. Yeah. Answer the question that you had just here. So, outside of the environmental, I think we can speak back to the process. So we're, we're July when we were about this, December is where we're at now. And what we have been told from people, locals have been looking at taking the time by property within our uh, unit. And we're quoting them saying it's a six to 18 month process. And here we are six months in, we're trying to have this approval done. And it, it feels to me that everything. Lacey, yeah. I know I'm out of order, but when, when before any other stuff happens with Saab, when would the public be allowed to speak, or would that just come at the end of the meeting after the votes are taken? Uh, the public comment is uh, down towards the bottom, in, uh, but I would, if the uh, board would like, because um, I didn't make a, nobody made a motion or an addition and corrections to the agenda to allow the public comment to go before the uh, Saab them first um, so if the board would like to uh, listen to uh, some public comment 
And the other thing, too, the answer, and I think maybe the way you were asking, Mike, is the public comment is not just only to this board, but you also, any citizen can write to the director of the natural resources, who has final say on whether this project gets the, green, the ultimate green light. And the public comment period, I believe, commences after there's approval from the township and, um, and this board, because DNR agreed to wait, right? And there's always a 30-day public comment period, the way they described it to us before. I don't know, I can't speak to the DNR if the November 7th publication, their 30 day public yeah. comment has been you know, completed and it's over with, I don't know. That's how Tom Barnes described it. He said our last meeting was that there's still going to be a public comment period and we don't know what the dates of that are. Okay. Well, you certainly have public comment at Graham Township at their meeting and since this could go forward. Right. And you also, if you want to go to the National Resources Commission meeting, which would be all the determination of whether they're, they're willing to say it, they have public my, my concern is if this local board is making a decision on a local issue, then the few locals that happen to find out about this meeting probably should at least be able, I don't like to talk, but I might as well, because I think I have some important things to say, and I believe that some others in the room have some things to say that may not necessarily fit the agenda of some of the officials that, I don't know how many people no one else has asked my opinion, but I think it's pretty clear what mine is, but there's a lot of reasons, I think there are reasons for it. So um, I, I might give you some, some board members some local twist on it. Um, we're, we're opening the, the public comment. Uh, oh, I got a bunch of nods. So, so I'm, gonna, I'm gonna need somebody to take these notes of the public comment and fill um, for me, because I've gotta go in about five or eight minutes to go pick up kids. So can somebody take notes from what the public has to say, because I. Need to I'll hear them. I want, I want them to be in the minutes. I will do the best I can, Colin. But I know I'm mean, in general about it. I, I know, but I, I don't want to miss them. And if I leave and nobody's agreed to take at least some notes about it, are you recording this in? No. So you can. I have no idea. It's not mine. It's not mine. It is not me. So, can, can a couple of people at the lace? You're going to try to take some notes. I will try. A couple people. I will not be able to keep up this this knowledge either. That's for sure. Um, so that being said, we have uh, multiple board members that you know have other obligations. Um, you know, in the days point, this meeting was a special meeting that was called with two or three days notice. Um, I don't know if we should. In, in my opinion, I, I don't think we should proceed without you know board being board members being present to hear what's going on personally in person and taking them from my notes which I admit will be inadequate. Um, I, I don't think we should proceed forward with this the rest of this in my opinion. Lacey, so if the this board would approve or deny the township board still has to get their input, correct? They would. Yep. And but it's not a recommendation of the CCEDP. The CCEDP does, does, does the uh, most of the work and if we don't have adequate board members here that are not hearing every single piece of it we have you know some board members that haven't been to one meeting regarding this yet so you know i just i don't know what to tell our township board i'd have to tell them that you know there wasn't you know all the board members did not quit get every piece of information that they wanted and you know and then some of them weren't even at the meeting but we do have a quorum of the board we do have a quorum yep and i in my opinion the, the purpose of this meeting was for us to review this information and whatnot and, and we we have had multiple meetings with the public's input um, and they've had the chance to as well. So I, I think otherwise, I think that we've had the information. Dan? I'd like to make a motion to postpone also for the public just to, to add the paper to give the public just to see if Henry did, but I know we've had anglers this out and one of the people that have environmental terms that have came to previous meetings and they've just been in special meetings. They have not really come here to give us their input based on the environment and the events that they see. Discussion is why I've got a concern about delaying this. I, I've been pretty clear about what my concerns are, uh, but 
but I've got a concern also about delayedness. I, I'm trying to also be cognizant. Um, one of our public comments from last meeting was um, from the director of the Road Commission, Don Babcock, and he expressed disdain about the board, and I would say it's not the board's uh, issue. You need to get the information, and that's how I responded to him. But there's a lot of other things that are um, contingent upon what the board does or doesn't do here. And I, I do understand exactly why you want to adjourn to allow full public comment. But I think Emily stated it right. If, if that's the purpose of this meeting was to have a discussion and have a vote by the board, and we've not gotten that yet. I, I've got to get going quick, and I don't want to be the cause of needing to have this adjournment. I respect what you're saying, Lacey. You don't want to, you don't want to have things go without board members present. Um, but we've heard, we've heard the input of the board members. And um, I, so I second the, the motion to adjourn for purposes of discussion, but I also uh, have reservations about that. I think maybe the, uh, maybe the better use of the board's time is to just put it to a vote. I think everyone has pretty clearly um, thought about this. I don't think that anybody that's waving any of the board members hasn't put thought into it. And, and so I, I don't view it as um, rushing a decision at this point. Okay. But, but I second the motion to adjourn because I, I understand that. So I guess do we need to have a vote on whether or not we adjourn or not adjourn? Yeah, we have a motion and a second on the floor. Be a motion to postpone so we continue yeah. to continue this meeting just to give notice to the public. Um, and and you know, I, I've, I've been waiting because I figured somebody would make a motion to attend Doug's lunch or the afternoon when he's making motions to approve that this point. Right. So to me, we're just going in a circle. I, I agree with you. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to approve the draft. Well, we have a motion to postpone. So we have a motion on the floor to adjourn. We have a second. Is there any further discussion on that? Okay. Um, all in favor of uh, postponing the uh, this meeting, say aye. Aye. Opposed. Aye. 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 Okay. You got your cell phone. Yes. Okay. We have another motion on the floor. Jim Knight, I'm from Barely Township. K and I GHD. I'm from Barely Township. I'm an elected official out there. I'm one of your neighbors. I've been following this um, situation out here. Um, and uh, adamantly, we are opposed at the Barely Township Board. I've stated that. Um, what's also been stated um, through the last two, two years or so is that the camp expansion, in fact, there's three members of the board right up here and Mr. Campos was involved with writing resolutions as opposed to uh, the expansion of Camp Green. And what many of us feel is that's exactly what this is, is this is an expansion of the camp and this is what Saab wants to do by using the ranges here. So I'll just say this, I did an, uh, an informal survey on Facebook and once again it's Facebook and I asked a simple question. Would you like to see Saab come here to build a munitions plant? 
And overwhelmingly, over 700 people responded to that. And the overwhelming response was absolutely no with further adjectives involved in it. In fact, the people that were for it were in the single digits. So I'm I, my comment to you is, and to this board, and what Judge Hunter has, has stated, and, and, and so has Dan, you're not hearing from the public. And when you don't hear from the public and you make a decision like this, that is a turning point in the history of this town. And that's what can happen because it could be catastrophic, just like what we had with the Peters. And if you people are gonna not allow public comments before you people take a vote, then you're subject to whatever happens to you how the public feels about this situation. So if you're gonna deny or not even take consider having some type of a public comment period or actually a separate meeting so you people can hear the people, not sob, you people are making the decision. It's up to you people to go forward with this project. And by all means, please consider what we have here. We have the resources here and the ecosystems that are world renowned. And you're willing to risk that for 75 jobs? I can't believe you guys would even consider anything like that. The dangers that this would bring to this community. And if you don't take the public's comment, you're going down the wrong path. I agree with Judge Hunter. It should be stopped. Mike McNamara, Grayling Township, lifelong resident of Crawford County. I fly fish with Joe Smock. I fly fish with Lacey. There's probably not that many more people than me that spend as much time in the outdoors. A lifelong career military man, deployed to Iraq, didn't see another American other than my small eight-man team for almost a year. Completely for the military, completely for the soldiers, completely for having the right weapons and equipment that they can defend themselves and defend this nation. I want to make sure everybody understands that. I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not an advocate. I did fight the camp railing expansion, and we were pretty successful. But I can't understand for the life of me having an emergency meeting and trying to jam, or a special meeting and trying to jam this through, just because pressure was put on from a couple state agencies. We can all have an opinion about those state agencies, but at the end of the day, when things I said last meeting, and we've only had meetings where the public was involved today and a month ago, on November 7th, or first week of November, somewhere in there. But I guess my point is, why is it so imperative that we jam this through? And I heard what Dan, ba Dan, Dan Bobcat said. You know, he, was, he was frustrated a little bit. But again, it wasn't the board's fault. This has all been jammed through. Take a look how long it's taken Stroop's trucking to get, get pushed through. Well, that's the normal. When you start expediting things, I said this in the last meeting, when we start expediting things and start skipping steps and start rushing things, that's where we make mistakes. And we've made, we as an organization, not this board, but we have made a lot of mistakes on this whole process. And a lot of political pressure or bureaucratic pressure has been put on this board. And I think we should let the system work and take time. And I, I'm not sure why we're even here today why not meet in January at the normal scheduled meeting? You know, Saab, and again, this, this is not about anti-Saab, it's more about anti, we're talking about a munitions plant, and we can talk about, you know, a trucking company may be hazardous, a repair facility may be hazardous, you know, those all those little minor, minor things can be engineered out, and they are engineered out. They sure aren't putting, not like the old days, where we, we pump waste right into the Saab River. But I guess my point is, this is a munitions factory. This is, and again, we can call it an assembly plant. That's kind of baloney. It's a munitions factory. If it goes boom, it blows up, it's a munitions plant. So these are high <coughs> risk. And we talked earlier a little bit about the amount of contamination at all these old army depots, ammunition depots. I mean, it's un unreal, the contamination levels. 
And I am a big fan of Bonnie Backers. She has been tremendous in this whole PFAS situation. I'm sure she did her due diligence and did a great job with an environmental assessment, not an environmental impact study that normally takes two or three years. My point is, a munitions plant is a big deal. Is a big deal, and I think the board should delay their vote and get more public input, get the public's perspective on this. Because when we look around the room today, there's not many of us that spend too much time in the outdoors. I think what we have here, and I think every kid, boy and girl from Grayling, should be allowed to have the same opportunities that some of us in this room had and utilize the outdoors. But the more we look around, we're going to turn this place into a military defense infrastructure where we're not going to see too many troops anymore because Michigan's only got Michigan's only got five to seven thousand. Ohio's not coming anymore. Indiana, Illinois doesn't come. So now we're going to see Raytheon, General Dynamics, Saab. We're going to see all these trucks out here using our land. Right now, Range 30 is shut down. The whole area around Range 30, nobody can deer hunt. The gates are all closed because defense contractors are there utilizing Range 30. So any Grayling, Ross Common, Lake City person can't hunt that area. Thank you very much and have a good day. Appreciate your time. Thank you. <clears throat> You know, the only thing I don't want to say, and again, I'm not going to vote, and I didn't say anything about any of any of this other than to Jim. Jim, you know, I know you're a left official over in Beaver Creek, and I know there's a lot of agencies and a lot of different groups that use Facebook. I'm not one of them, right? So we've had a few meetings that the public could came could have came to, and they have. Well, don't stop. Stop. I'm, I'm looking at you. Oh, yeah, you can, because damn it, there is more. I hear more positive than negative. When, when I'm out and about from people, it seems to me, and again, I'm not on Facebook, but the Facebook people are keyboard wizards and they just, they don't like to come out in the public and say anything. So if there's a public meeting, I would hope that you can get those 700 people here, Jim. That would be great. If you have one, we'll be there. Yeah, if, if, uh, I'll respond to that, Joe. Yeah. Uh, if we had a meeting like that, it needs to be advertised well in advance. And, and the fact that you know you're making a comment and the people you talk to are all, all for this. Is one of those happen to be your nephew who's no. now now has an employee for shop? That is is that one of them? No, no. All right. Yeah. This is uh, public comment is to address the board and each other. Joe, you made the mistake addressing these gentlemen in the front. The gentlemen in the front are now addressing the gentlemen in the back. Oh, um, sorry. And uh, so, you know, you guys got your point across. I'll let you carry on just a little bit longer than I probably should have because uh, they, they, they did use your name. And you I did. appreciate the, the Thank you, I Mason. think I allowed you the time to respond to him. Um, you okay with that, Jim? Yeah, I'm oh, good. Thank you. You're welcome. All, All right. right. So, if anybody has public comment that you'd like to direct to the board, and do not pick out individual people um, that are attending this meeting. Um, Martha Duby, Levels Township. Yeah. I just have a question about how these meetings are published. How is the public notified? Paul, can you answer that, please? It's the CCEDP is a 501c3. It is not a public body and therefore is not subject to the Open Meetings Act. So there's no requirement to publish. And as a true, as I don't want to say as a true, the practice since we've been in place, we've never published any meetings. So the Crawford County Economic Development, is it council or committee? Partnership. Partnership, okay. You're saying you are not a public body. Correct. Okay. The, the whole purpose of this body was to be a, a, a public-private partnership to try and attract business. And 
business when they want to come in, and it was, it was created predominantly for the animal leader, for that 1,800 acres that uh, had been set aside. Businesses that want to come in generally want to be, they don't want their name out there. They don't want the, their competition to either torpedo their plans or, or get in underneath them. So the, the 501c3 was developed so we'd be able to do that. And, and that's how we managed to work through the process. And then all we do is decide, okay, we have public people, we have private people, we have business people. Is this a good fit? That's that's our whole purpose. Is this a good fit for what you know what we believe? Whether we we say yes or no, it, it, it then goes to the state of Michigan, it goes to Brandon Township, then it becomes public because it has to go through a governmental body and it has to go through the township and it has to go through the state. So at that point in time, everything's public and it's out there. But the, the business that is trying to come in has their footing on the ground where they have, they have their business plans, they have their whatever we require of them to move forward so they, they're ahead of what they perceive as their competition because they just need more sure. And to follow up on what Paul said, when Araco came in, we worked with them almost a year before anything went out to the public, just trying to make sure you know, what, what they were bringing in was gonna fit and were they, you know, were they, were they, was there yeah. too much competition between you know, Rocco and Warehouser and, and KJ? Exactly. You know, there, there was a lot of things that we, we talked about during that time. It just seems like having a private group that is not a public body make decisions that dictate the future of our area. And for my children and my grandchildren and great grandchildren, uh, you're saying that it, it, you don't have the final say, it goes to Township Board. You're making recommendations. But these organizations have worked with you for, as you say, a year prior to public knowledge of, of it even coming. You're working directly with DNR on land sale decisions. I think there is a huge gap in transparency to the public. I understand they don't want their competition getting a leg up on them and knowing that they're going to be the first or that they're going to go for a piece of land that may be enticing to someone else. But... Decisions like this one and decisions that could have such a lasting impact, I think, deserve public transparency prior to voting. I, I just, I, I agree with Judge Hunter that this is different than a trucking company. This is the beginning of a wave. So if Saab is allowed to come here and build this and use Camp Grayling for testing their products, which is a training facility, not testing site. They won't be the last. This will be a flood of people coming in because the draw to coming here and testing at Camp Grayling is there is lower oversight. There aren't as many regulations. And I live five miles from one of the ranges they'd be testing their missiles and bombs at. So I definitely have a problem with that. Um, I just feel like there's a huge lack of transparency. Today's meeting, I only found about out about through word of mouth. I don't know where it was, and you said it's not a, a public body, so you didn't have to share. So that, I'm done with my public comment. Those are just um, my perceptions. And I, and I respect that. Just, just as a follow-up, most economic development agencies All right, public comment is over. We did, uh, but we'll give you one last chance. You get your say. Did everybody get their say in the public? That's your question. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, Danny, we had, um,
Okay. Next. We have a motion on the floor. We do not have a second. Who did? Eric did. did. Yeah. Okay, and that was back in Collins yeah. earlier notes, right? Or finally second by Eric to approve. Okay. So we, stop. Um, we have a motion and a second. Um, further discussion on the motion. I'm not ready to make a decision on it yet. So I can give you some time. Well, you would be able to. We have a motion and a second on the floor to uh, for. Uh, I'm not going to take that. Is it really a recommend the sale? Do you move forward with Graham Township? Recommend Graham Township move forward with the sale? Yeah. Was that the motion? Yes, that was the second. Yeah. We don't really approve the sale. Right. Does everybody understand the motion? State the motion one more time, please, for so everybody knows. Um, I motion to approve and sell the recommendation to the consumer. However, people think it should be worded. I'm not going to do that. But my intention okay. is to approve. To move forward with the sale. Yes. Okay. Um, any further discussion? Last chance. Roll call vote. Paul? Yes. Eric? Yes. Anita? No. Tom? Yes. Danny? No. Emily? No. Lacey? I'm not ready to make a decision yet. No. trying to count them before I yeah. made sure I had them accurate in my notes yeah. before. So the motion for the sale does not, is not approved. Well, I would All right. highly recommend everybody go to Monday night's Kirkland board meeting with some, um, that'll be the second public meeting that they've had. Mm -hmm. Maybe third. Is everybody aware? Is that this one's going to be an informational meeting. The other one was an open house, correct? That's right. May I ask when your next meeting is? This board? Um, our regular meeting is the third Wednesday of January. Is the third Wednesday of January. Our regular scheduled board meeting is the third Wednesday of January at 2 p.m. Say aye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Opposed. 